Hey, welcome back everybody. Sign here again with another episode of Harmonious Engineering. And we're up to five buckets now. Yeah. Definitely don't have to do dripstone if you want, you know, to actually use good amounts of lava for anything. All right. So I've got a bunch of silica steel. More is being made up over there. And I would like to get my hands on some loaders and unloaders, which is just same recipe, so I just need a couple of boxes. And just go like so. And like so. And yeah, let's go ahead, pop you down. And output to comparator. Output redstone activation. Okay. Consider all minecarts only locked. Activate output during loading and activity. Activate output when cart is empty. Empty minecart slots entirely. Leave one item in slots. All right. So now the tanks here are a little on the spendy side. I mean, not bad. I mean, I do have a good amount of copper. So I need 54 copper. So I need six blocks worth. And we can do that. A bucket and a couple silica steel. There we go. If I go to here, I can then do that. Minecart with tank. All right. And then let's get ourselves a powered locking rail, which is a powered rail plus silica. So some of that. Why is that a shape recipe? All right. Output redstone activation. Okay. Uh, let's see. Activate output when cart is empty. Output cart contents. So you can use these as uh, comparators as well. And they hold two buckets worth of fluid two bu and 2,000 RF as well. When cart is empty. There we go. So then I can just take and drop that there. Oh, that's right. You're going to be... Uh, let me just get a... And... There. Right. And then... Boom. I just shot it straight off. And now if I was to... Oh, you break apart? That is not cool. Do that, and then I've got a bucket of kerosene here because, well, kerosene. Right now it's a waste product. Oh, I can't, uh... Right. And so, let me go ahead, grab another one of you. Actually, no, it was that way. There we go. Put you here. During loading and activity. Yeah, that'll work. And we'll do this. And another regular rail. Right here. Not a fan of how it actually breaks apart. But... Oh well. So, here we go. And... Really? You can't manually place fluids inside of that thing? That's unfortunate. Uh, here we go. Liquid hopper. And one bucket of kerosene. There we go. Boom. And, oh, here we go. And, boom. These things transfer extremely fast as well, as you can tell. I mean, it was on here for just a split second. So, let's go ahead and put this down again. Oh, you, you, here we go. And this, the tank itself will hold 40 uh, buckets, which is pretty nice. I see you up there, Creeper. All right, so using 
the setup though. Uh, come on, there you go. Uh, but using the setup would be really easy to get lava up here. And we're just going to avoid this bucket of kerosene. Dude! Hmm. Yeah, I think we can do that. You are just being a huge pain. You're going to go into timeout, buddy. <laughs> uh, all right. So we're going to need probably a few things. Uh, okay, let me. Hmm. Yeah, let me get some stuff taken care of here. All right, so I've got a minecart unloader here, and. Let's put you here for now, right? So direction of travel is going to be uh, clockwise, or counterclockwise. There we go. And let's see, we've got fluid pump here, which I'm going to put in right here. Grab ourselves an engineer's hammer. Input, output. This is going to need a redstone signal eventually, but oh well. Time for that later. And... Alright, so we're coming up about here-ish, okay. And I want to make an immersive engineering fluid tank because, well, I like how they look. So, there we go. Three, four. Iron sheet metal. Let's go ahead and do one here. Surround it. Dang it. Because the, uh, uh, it's a fence right there, and it's half a block taller. And let me shift right off of it. It's like... Uh, just remember in the old days, whenever that didn't work. Of course, those were also the days where microblocks would kill you, so I mean... That is what? One, two, three, four? Okay, that should be the top then, right? There it goes. And then we can take a bunch of these fluid pipes, go like so. And like so. There we go. And actually... Go ahead and have it pump into the top. There we go. So let's get back down here. I need a better way up and down. So do I have a lever on me? I have redstone torches. I guess that would work. Just put a torch down here instead. And now I need one of these powered locking rails. And you're facing the wrong way. And these things are directional, by the way. You can see from this little symbol here on there. All right, so if I do that, there it goes. And it sent it right along its way. Downside. 
Now I have to chase behind this to make sure I've got enough power rails to move this minecart. Eh, looking like it so far. It is getting kind of slow. But it's enough, right? I could add more power rails here and there if I need to. I've got a few left. Uh, I might need to for the uh, the route back up. But up here it's 11 blocks and then three, uh, three powers. And I went ahead and put stairs in the whole way down and kind of regretting it, actually, because I'm hitting my head the whole way down. And look at that down there. It's stuck. The tank cart does not have enough oomph to uh, to go. So, let me get me. Let me get off the stairs here. Oh, that may have been the issue there. Okay, nope. Stop. Thank you. Uh, I left the other minecart just sitting on the track. <laughs> Whoops. And they were playing bumper cars with each other. Okay, yeah, see that? It's getting stuck now. It doesn't have enough oomph to, to go further. Oh, hello. Just run me over, why don't you? Dang it. And it's going to launch up and get stuck. Okay. Right. Okay, let's try that again now. You and you. There we go. And... Yeah, see, the thing is, is cargo carts are heavier than regular mine carts are. They have mass, which, yep, see. Is a problem. Well, that's odd now, isn't it? The minecart came up, hit the corner, and embedded itself halfway into the wall. This is why I'm doing test runs, because things don't always act like you think they would. And I had to go back and make more power rails, but now it can make it up the slope on its own, so... Right. So, and let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, it is getting kind of annoying having to constantly remake this thing, though. Okay. I don't know why it embedded in the wall, though. That was weird. And... It's going to come down here. Boom. Get something right back around. And everything should be working fine now, hopefully. Let's get that out of my offhand for now. Do 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 do. It's pretty decent little jaunt though. And down it goes, right? And then we should see it come back up here in a moment.
Yeah. It's going to bug me if I don't fix this. There it goes. And... Now, are you going to do the thing again where you got stuck in the wall? Because that was just weird. Nope, nope, you're good. Okay. And now, I also have a question. Okay, this is chunk loaded. It's a 7x7 seven seven area down at the bottom. I should probably get some chunk loaders or something. I mean, I could set up a train with a chunk loader following this, or I could just chunk load the track. Waiting to see uh, the, the cart come back now. And... Pretty sure that we're going to run out of a uh, trunk loading range, though. Although, I'm keeping, I think, 12 out. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, 11, 12. So, out here is currently being loaded by me. And... See, I should be loading the entirety of the track just by being in this area here. Hello, spider. All right. Um, thing is, while I had the map open, it could have gone by me and I never would have realized. And it's starting to look like that was the case. Yep. That's exactly what happened. All right, well, it's not... Well, let me check to make sure it didn't run off the end here. Yep, nope. Okay. Hey, there's the cart. Yeah, I'm going to have to... Yeah, let's just do that. Add a few more power rails in here and there. All right, well. Eh, it'll probably be better for now. I, I mean, not perfect, but better. All right, so I went ahead and I got a pump over there on my tank, pipes, and leading into the loader, I have this thing set up to out activate output when card is full, and it'll output the signal straight up to the power locking rail. And the cart did a full circuit with me down here, so everything's loaded like it should be, which is great. So, we go for now. You can just use the uh, redstone torches. And it is filling up with lava. It's one of the nice things about the immersive engineering pipes is they run a lot longer off of a pump than the uh, Create ones do. So, yeah, Create's got a maximum range per pump. I think it's like 12 blocks. I don't think the immersive engineering pumps really have a max range. But they are more expensive too, so... All right, so 38 buckets, and there it goes. And apparently it's just a slight bit faster than I am on stairs. Oh, I'll make up lost time once I get to the top of here. Or not. There it goes. It got stuck at the corner for a second, but that might have just been a graphical glitch rather than it trying to embed itself in the wall again. I may just have to cut that corner out just a little bit more. And... Oh 
almost there. It's still a bit of a hike, and it's on the unloader now. So yeah, the extra power rails added in really sped, uh, sped this thing up. And, okay, it's unloading automatically. Now, I need an empty bucket in my hand so I can see what's going on here. And it's filling up our tank. Once this reaches 40, the cart should go ahead and head on back. And, yep, it's already on its way back. Awesome. So, I think I'm going to go AFK here for a bit and make sure that the the cart is going to run fine for now without having to do any chunk loading or anything. So, yeah, we're up to 120 buckets now, so definitely working as it should without me having to actually worry about chunk loading anything. You know what? No. You can go in the cubby as well. There we go. I don't need to trade with them, so I don't need them to have access to their uh, trade stations. All right, but now we've got lava. Which means that uh, maybe we should look at making dynamos? Magmatic dynamos, even? even? All right. So, Envar... Basically, we make it in an arc furnace, it looks like. Or, you know, the induction smelter, but uh, don't have access to that quite yet. Uh, I could make Envar blend as well. I think, actually, that might be our better bet for right now, because I've already got the, uh, the dust made up over here. All right, and our steam engine's still working. Okay, good. So, nickel dust, and then we'll grab that. There we go. And, oh, hey, it just filled up. <laughs> this is completely useless now, actually. Since I actually have lava over here now, thanks to the uh, thing. And my inventory is full, because of course it is. All right. There we go. So I can make eight dynamos. I don't know if I could power eight dynamos, though. And... Yeah, you've got more charcoal. Okay. There's that. Let's get... Uh, that can go away as well. Dirt and gravel. See them? Yeah. Oh, well. I need to make bigger bins, actually. And I think what I would like to see is instead of the bins, each one being made separately, is uh, upgrade. Take your older bin and upgrade it in the smithing table. At least that way I'm not going to have a bunch of, you know, the tier one bins that I don't really have a need for. And we'll just go ahead and grab that as well. Went hunting for iron and brought back a couple stacks of ore, which... Yeah, I need to get uh, iron production up and running here soon. Uh, at least Create has a way of basically producing infinite iron, which is honestly great. Make a huge help there. And just got another half stack here. You can go into here. Here we go. Get you put away. There we go. And that, that, and that can go in there. All right, and we're up to 160. Okay, cool. So that'll hold 512 buckets worth. And then we can have up to an additional 40. Uh, buckets in the minecart waiting to pump up into here. So, I see you guys up there. 
They just spawned in up here. Well, they're noisy, but they're not really all that, uh, All right, and okay, I got shot once and all that. Alright, so we got the ominous banner and we got some arrows out of that. Alright, no worries. Alright, and 20 buckets now. Alright, cool. So yeah, no, 20, 200. 200 buckets. So yeah, it's working just like I wanted to. That's the main thing. I need to get a good enchanted bow going. Just completely, I forgot about bows until now. And, uh, I do need to actually get to the end and fight the dragon and all that fun stuff. So I want to play with, like, the maglev rails, and I'm going to need a lot of chorus fruit for that. I am making plates right now. Dang it make gears. Okay, what are some uses for in-bar plates? Uh, there's a few. Alright, what else we got? Uh, we got the packing and unpacking dies, gear working die, numismatic, and the auxiliary process sleeve. So, not the end of the world. Just, I don't have a lot of Invar to be making mistakes like that with, so. Yeah. And... There. Alright, so... Let's go ahead and... Get into here. Now, the other thing we need for dynamos, though, are redstone flux coils. So I need redstone wire coil, which is going to need aluminum wiring, okay? I need gold plates, blaze rods, and electron tubes. And that'll be three deployers in a row. Or just one deployer, really. So I've got two brass hands here. All right, so, and, okay, I do have my aluminum on me, good. I need to make some aluminum wiring as well now. There we go. Grab all this stuff. And... Yeah, the tank's filling up nicely over there. So I need, uh, let's say, four sticks and eight redstone. Thought I had some redstone dust left. I guess not. All right. So, looking at you, uh, this. Here we go. And now, I need a blaze rod. So 
So we slap our blaze rod on the depot. And now our first step is a gold plate. Second step, redstone wire coil. Third, electron tube. Hey! Oh, I have to do it twice? Really? Yeah, times two. Man, that is, uh... These things are not cheap, that's for sure. And I'm out of electron tubes now. So... Four and four of these, because I need to make some more of these guys. I need a polished rose quartz. And you, you, and you. And then I can drop that into there. Redstone flux coil. All right. So, I don't know why. I just right clicked on the depot like it was a crafting table. I am missing two iron ingots. Okay. I almost went back to the depot to use like a crafting table. Wow. Yeah. And we have ourselves a magmatic dynamo. So, at this point, let's go ahead and just temporarily get you here. I should have some pipes in here. Do you like that? Let's get that grass out of here. I am out of redstone supplies on me now. I've got a lever in here, though. There we go. So if I throw a lever here, there we go. It'll go ahead and fill this up with lava. You can have that bucket, actually. And now we need... I need to eat. The, uh, what is it called? Not flux. There's the alternator. This is the one that produces power, right? Yeah. So I need the electric motor. Okay. So, can we make these at all, ever? No, doesn't look like it. Okay. Oh, that's... going to be... a little bit of a pain now, isn't it? And you are at 96%. Okay. But you're done. Alright, cool. Let's go ahead and grab that. Take this one out for now. Do this. We'll drop you into there. And I've got one finished PCB on me. I've got enough, I think it's capacitors or transistors, one of the two, to make one more of these. Uh, it was transistors, okay. Which means I'll have two, which is what we need to make a motor. I need two LV wire coils and a connector. There we go. Here you can have those. And a connector. Uh, I need two brass and a shaft. So, two brass and... Uh, thought I had them in here. Did I put them in here? Yeah, I did. Okay. And then I need a kinetic generator, which is going to be eight more LV wire coils. No, just make a bunch of these. All right. And electric motor. All right, cool. So I'm also going to need then a couple of you guys. How about you and our relays? It's always nighttime, I swear. 
Uh, let's put you here. And all right. Okay. Now that it's morning, let's do this the uh, somewhat smarter way. Let me get everything set up here. So, Mercer Engineering's got this wonderful thing where it'll actually see so it says linking. When you get too far away, it turns from orange to red. So I can put this here. Also, you can climb these things like ladders, which is awesome. Nope, too far away because vertical. All right. How about here then? And there we go. Out. Ow. Right. And then we can. Okay, so. Probably here would be fine, actually. Yep. And then how far over this direction can we get? Right to about here-ish? Okay. And... So, you... And let's just go ahead and get that out of here. We'll go ahead and put our connector here. Nope. Dang it. Backwards. There we go. Connector there and hook that up, right? And now it is rotating. Energy usage, 30 forge energy per tick. This produces what, 40? Uh, max produces 40. Okay. So we're getting there, right? And I can go through. Really? You're annoying. Okay, well that's generating another thousand uh, stress units. These things each take 1152 at the current speed. But I've also got this sped up quite a bit. Um, right, so how am I going to work this exactly? All right, so I've got everything tweaked enough now. This is using 2040 forge energy per tick and producing 8,000 stress units. So, it'll work for now. There we go. And this thing acts strange. It's not receiving all the power at once. Well, it's, I'm not sure if it's... I'm willing to bet it's the electric motor for whatever reason. Because usually uh, immersive engineering is a lot better about providing steady power and same with thermal which we're producing 240 RF a tick right now. So, which is exactly what our motor over here is using. Now to get it to 240, uh, I dipped into the augments. We have got reinforced integral components times three, which this is electrum, signalum, nether quartz, and then hardened, which is, you know, pretty basic, golden gear and invar ingots. Signalum ingots come from Signal and blend, which is copper dust and redstone, right? Pretty basic stuff. I mean, we've got access to all that already. So, and then uh, we've got a couple augments in there, one of which required lumium, which was silver and tan. So, how is our pressure doing now? One, four, seven. Let's see, yeah, there's a problem I've got going on here, and that is. I'm not actually producing plastic right now uh, because my refinery is backed up. 
but the vortex tubes are still using power or well air pressure and here you go you could probably just get some automation hooked up to this but oh well and this thing has yet to make a single <laughs> one of those okay there we go i can do that though and at least that's one less vortex tube doing its thing. Actually, I could do oh, that as well. There we go. And that'll make this thing so it can't work because it's getting too cold now. But I've got just tons of molten plastic in here. Which I don't really need right now anyway. So haven't really hit the point where I need tons of plastic. And now our pressure is 184 now. Okay. So our pressure is going up. Kind of. Uh, 185. It is very, very slowly building up. But at the same time, we're still trying to fill this beast up. And I mean, this is holding just a ton of air. So... But 188, so 189, so it's finally filling up. And you are at yeah, 188. Okay, so definitely good. Um, I could hook up four more of these rotational compressors to this, though. Because it's only using one quarter of the stress units. All right, so I went ahead and made four more rotational compressors. And I just heard this thing over here finally fire off. So that means we actually had the two bars of pressure necessary to make compressed iron, which has been sitting in there for quite a while now. 198, 199, and any second now? 2.0. So we should see this hopefully transform. Well, I heard the pop. There it goes. Hey, look at you go. And, okay, there it is, there we go, there's all the compressed iron I had in there. Now over here, 198, okay, 199, it's definitely filling up quicker. And there we go. Steady two bar. Current recipe upgrade matrix. There it goes. And boom. Upgrade matrix. All right, cool. So it needs one bucket of water per four. I figured that was the case, but yeah. All right. And you're still cooking away. You're at 2.1 right now, which is awesome. And, yeah, you're working just fine, so. That is quite a bit more uh, air generation, though. I do need to, like, really clean this up. This is just a mess and a travesty all at once. And the last thing I'm worried about is my lava, but I shouldn't be because it's full. <laughs> Yeah, right now it is currently draining from the uh, the tank car down there. And... Seven buckets, yeah, so. So we should be good to go on that. But, I mean, it's kind of a complicated system, but where's the point in doing it, you know, overly easy? Actually, let me, let me fix this over here. There. Now the grass will grow. I probably could hook those vortex tubes back up, but, uh, meh, not too worried about it.
Because, like I said, I'm not actually doing anything with plastic right now, so. But I do need to get some transistors made up now. But now I actually have enough air pressure to, to craft these without having any issues. But, yeah, I need these things here, which is plastic, redstone, and gold nuggets. So I've got... Let's do, like, six, which would be 18... And then it's, what, one redstone each? Okay, so I need... That. And then we can get some more transistors made up, I can get some capacitors made up, and... All this fun stuff here. So... You, you, and you. So here me watch this. And I'm waiting to hear the, the interface cycle again. It's going to take a bit because it's moving gold nuggets in and it's just a regular hopper. I wonder if we should get a rapid hopper in there. And it looks like we didn't really lose any pressure. Now at this rate though, I can tell I am going to need to uh, get a safety set, uh, system set up in here. Uh, let's look up our motor again. All right. Is this redstone controllable? Doesn't say anything about it, though. Determine by the set RPM. Uh, we have clutches, right? Spins through until you give it power. But then does it... Okay, it does stop it. Okay, perfect. So what I can do then is hook up like a safety gauge here or whatever. I need to move this back one. But uh, something else I could do. To use up a little of this extra air pressure for now. And go ahead and get some air put into here. Uh, move this back by one block. Uh, put a clutch in. Put a safety valve or safety gauge in here. Uh, safety, okay. We'll vent higher pressure. That's not quite what I want. And there's the safety net from Farmer, really. I'll have to play around with that too, I guess. Uh, there we go. Pressure gauge module. And it's a redstone signal at two times pressure in bars, okay? So when this thing emits uh, 10, that would be the time, well, actually at 9. That would be the time to uh, do the gauge, or the, not the gauge, the clutch. So... And then let's go ahead and add that to our list. You are made just an anisette casing, a shaft, and redstone. I mean, you can't get much easier than that. And you, I don't think I actually have any more anisette casings, do I? And speaking of which, I need to make more andesite alloy, and that is Two andesite to one compressed iron. Okay. There we go. Uh, let's grab ourselves a redstone and a shaft, which I had. Are you shapeless? Oh, you are. That is awesome. Right, so 
you can go here. Motor can go here. I think I had it at 256, yeah. There we go. And I think we're pushing right to the limit of what this thing can do power-wise. See how it keeps stopping every little bit? Yeah. So now you are made tube. Okay, redstone. And that's just four gold around compressed iron. All right, well, you can go into there. We'll grab these and take them back. And well, you can go to there for now. So four gold. And then I need two redstone for now. And one of you. And then I can take, put that in like so. There we go. And then this, I think, just clamps onto an existing tube. So. Let's put you, yeah, just like right there. Emitting redstone five. So, I'm going to work this in, right? All right. You know, sign doing vanilla redstone is never pretty. <laughs> but, so... I have nine redstone coming up from here, which this will trigger at a 4.5 bar pressure. So 0.5 below max. And at that point, it'll power this repeater, which will turn off this torch, turn this one on, and turn off the clutch. So. And I'll just leave that there so I can actually see what's going on. I put a redstone lamp there or something in the future or on top of this, but uh, at least it'll shut these off once we uh, you know what? actually here, give me this uh, once we get high enough let me try this out though now those are shut off now come on me ah, dang it, I can't can't click on that. Oh, well. Let's click on this, right? Uh, our air is still going up, though. But we are still also running these seven as well. Even without those running. Okay. But it is going up a lot slower for one. No, actually, it's going down. Look at that. All right. So in that case... I need to see how I'll, how well I'll work without these running. But uh should be fine, I think. So, put that back. Those will kick back into life. Get you put here. And I need like a slab or something right there. So it doesn't, doesn't cut the redstone power. So I cut the redstone power, then I'm going to have stuff explode. And that's never fun. grab that though. At least that way I can kind of get some of the stuff around here cleaned up a little bit. Uh, you should be done, right? Yeah, you are. Yeah. There you go. Alright, but uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and call this an episode. And we got our stack and a half of andesite alloy. Awesome. So we've got... Basically, unlimited lava now. We have it being delivered to where it can be used. Yep. Stample without a problem. And then we're using some of that lava to power a comp our compressors over here to make sure that we can actually do pneumatic crap stuff. So, it'll work for now. Uh, the only thing I'm kind of worried about is in the future moving uh, moving enough lava to power dynamos if we do this you know any larger I might just uh, 
make another dynamo, but run it to a separate power line. So that way I can try to get maybe biodiesel up and running. Might not be a bad idea. And it's something I completely forgot to mention in the past. Uh, the warping recipes are working now. I can actually see them. And amethyst shard becomes a dimensional shard. So... Now, here's a question. I'm going to have to rig up a way to collect these on the other side, aren't I? Yep. Not the end of the world. And I have not been to the nether on camera in quite a bit. I need to do some stuff over here. Do I saw my... Yeah, I do. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, scoop up some blazes in my burners. Um, what are you? Yeah, okay, you're just uh, not supposed to be here. That's an overworld mob. Overworld mob. There we go. And uh, I have a feeling that it spawned over by my portal and then flew through. Alright, so, and then we can cook the glow coop into slime balls. Cool. Just need to figure out a way to farm those guys now. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and call this an episode. Um, damn if that's not a ton of cows. Yep. And here you guys go. There we go. Um, but uh, next time, I'm not sure which way we're going to go. I might try and uh, get over into the end. So I can get that taken care of as well. Um, I do need to finish up on my rice patty, though. It's it's almost done. I do have a little more... Well, basically just smelting to do at this point. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, we're we're doing good. We're, uh, we're steady on air pressure for now, which is a plus. And... So we've got a steady source of a flux generation there and here. This one, though, is being used just to produce air pressure. And... Hmm. Just trying to think of anything else I can do to, to kind of speed things up a bit. And I, I really can't think of anything. But thank you for coming out. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And, and until the next one, sign signing out. Have fun.